Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, your host, broadcasting from Tulum, Mexico. And the topic of the day is freedom. We're going to talk about what is freedom. There is a lot of misconception about freedom, but I'm going to get into that in details and explain it to you. Um, I used to have a different interpretation of it and uh, until that cleared up, but uh, we'll get, get into it. We're just going to do a meditation first. Um, we'll do a simple meditation. We're just going to dive inwards. I have shared with, with you this before is one of the easiest ways is to meditate is simply by shifting your attention inwardly. So you look inside and you follow your stream of thoughts. So when thoughts come for you and people say, I have a very hard time dealing with my thoughts, which I understand, um, and they could be very overwhelming at times. So what you do is you pay attention to the thoughts, not what the contents of them, just the noise, and you follow the thoughts inwards. And you just go in and you follow them to where they come from. And if you do this regularly, you discover that you go into a deep silence because they don't, the very source of them, there is nothingness. They appear out of nothingness. So if you just follow them inwards, you fall into a deep space of silence. And then, you know, they may just, they come back again naturally. And uh, if you come out of the meditation, you try it again. And this becomes a habit after a while and you will realize that actually it's very easy to dive into a deep state of silence. So let's go ahead and try that. Just follow your, tell, turn your attention inwards and look if there are thoughts, follow them and see where they come from and you fall into deep silence. So you just relax into this space. You fall into the presence. The being yourself. And as you become quiet and fall into this space, a phenomena takes over. Something that it's really has no name and doesn't have a description, but it's kind of like space opens up and you fall into that place.
slowly, slowly come back. So that was a very strong, beautiful, deep transmission, meditation. It's so amazing that um, <laughs> there, there are times that you don't want to come out of it and you don't want to talk when you fall back into this phase which i'm pretty much sure Everybody here experienced it right now. This is a part of the freedom. That you're able to disconnect from the world of the thoughts from the world of emotions and the physical world in a sense as the only reality that is very important. You disconnect from it. And what you do is you fall into the presence of yourself, the space that is here, that is you. You fall into that. And the space opens. And all of a sudden, a phenomena takes place. Um, which, it's very difficult to explain it for someone who has not been touched by this space. Because... They want to understand it by their mind, and the mind is not going to get it. But you know that because you have dove into it and experienced it of dropping into the presence, dropping into the space, that you're quiet, you're here. You're alive, you do exist, but you are disconnected to the 
a pan world, but very connected to the truth of who you are. Very connected to the world of spirit. And the space of the unification, the unified field of the oneness, of the presence of the being. Does this make, make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. So quite often people think, and I used to think the same way, like I want to be free. And I thought freedom means that I have a lot of money. I can travel, go wherever I want to go. I can buy anything I want. I can just do a lot of stuff that you can do if you, for example, you're not married, you don't have children, you don't have pets, you don't have anyone that you're accountable to and uh, you're, you're healthy, you can travel around the world and do whatever you want to do. So it is a form of freedom, but it's not really, and then freedom also is a very relative thing to some people freedom means something different than what it means to me. But that was my definition of being free, that I can just do whatever I want to do. Um, but, but I realized that it doesn't matter, let's say, how much money you have, how much physical freedom you have, Let's say you have five different houses around the world. You can go anywhere you want. There is no pandemic. No one's going to limit you what you can do. Uh, you can sleep with anybody you want. You can drink anything you want. You can eat anything you want. You just have, you can do whatever you desire. But one thing is going to haunt you. And that's going to be your mind. Your mind is going to haunt you. Because that's where the, the prison is. That you are traveling here, traveling there, doing this, doing that, but then you're worried about disease. What if you get sick? What if you develop cancer? What if something happens to you? You have a lot of money, then you're worried about taxes. How are you gonna hide this? Or a lot of people wanna make friends with you and you don't know if they really are your reef, real friends or they, they're making friends with you because of your status, because of the money, or you're famous. You got a lot of fame, now everybody wants to be around you. So. What I'm referring to is that being around people that are really paranoid, they're so stuck in their mind, they don't go based on their heart and everything has to be logical, everything has to make sense. And being around these people Every once in a while, I realize, oh my God, we live in a complete, completely different world. I keep forgetting that these people do exist and, um, and they're in such a big trap, so miserable that everything is mindy. Everything has to be calculated, everything has to be black and white, everything has to be logical. There is no following your heart, following your intuition. There's no room for magic, for the magic of life. Life's got its own magic and it doesn't follow any rules, not human rules.
it does its own thing. And to really becoming free completely and trusting life, being able to dive into the presence and operating from this place of not knowing, not that you have to always know everything, operating from, a, from no mind and being free in that and allowing life to come to you, life to unfold things for you, rather than this part of us that thinks that I have to make it happen and I have to do this and I have to do that. Yeah, you do that. That is a part of the, the function of your life. But a lot of the times you just don't know and you don't need to know. So learning how to go beyond the thinking mind that is analytical and processing all the time, that you have to know, you have to know, you have to know, to this place of freeing yourself, disconnecting from this world of mind that is always afraid, is always dwells in fear, is afraid of everything, is paranoid. And that's a prison. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter your physical abilities are really high or not, or you're very famous or whatever is your idea of freedom. But you're trapped. You're in this pr prison of fear and worry and anxiety. Of what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my children? Are they going to be safe? Are they going to be okay? What's going to happen in the future? Is there a world left for my kids, for myself? Can you come to this place that you're free from all these jealousies. Can you come to this place that you're free of all these self-hate or self-doubt? Because that's a big thing of coming to this place that you accept yourself, you love yourself for the way you are, not what you think you should be. And it's good to strive to get to where you, to get to the next place, but not beat yourself up because you're not there. Can you get to this place that if your partner or someone that you desire is flirting with someone else and you're not ready to, you're, you're not at a place ready to just kill or bust and leave and be acting out of control, out of character. Can you just let go of your money? Can you let go of your positions? If you lose everything, Can you let go of your body? Can you die? Are you ready to die? Today? Are you free of that? You have to question yourself. How are you going to die? Because the maker may call you back home. The boss may call you back home today. Today. Not tomorrow. Not next year. Today. Are you ready to go?
Right. Are your bags packed? Because people do die. It's just not you. Everybody else does. That won't happen to you. It happens to other people, but not to you, not to me. So am I going to die? Am I free from that? So freedom is a very, very, it's a huge thing to come to this place, to this recognition, to this space of awareness that you free yourself. That doesn't mean you're going to find a system to manipulate life to get what you want because you're working on yourself to be free. So I'm going to work on myself to be free so I can get what I want. No. You're going to work yourself to be free so when things don't go your way and you don't get what you want, you're still happy. You're still at peace with yourself. That's freedom. That you have come to a place that you're not always frightened of death from dying. That's a huge thing because we all operate from that place of the root chakra, survival. It's, 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 a, it's in our DNA. It's deeply rooted in our system. So can you free yourself from that? So as you do work on yourself and you bring this to your consciousness and awareness, and you're taking steps into self-freedom, existence also simultaneously begins to reward you. It, it talks to you, communicates with you, and you start to see the magic, the magic of life, the miracles. Existence starts to throw goodies at you. Because you are a part of existence. And it's, it's a constant communication of the self with the self, of the one being, one entity, that you are a part of that one entity. We're all a part of it. Different aspects of it, different parts of it, and different functions of it. But you're not separated. And a lot of times you can see during your day, in daily life, your state of freedom or this realization of becoming free gets challenged. You're challenged by different things that happen during the day. Mostly it has to do with things not going your way. Something's not going your way. And you get challenged by it because you get upset or you get disappointed or you get angry or you get frustrated. But mainly I'm talking about when you get really invested into the idea of something must go this way and you're very invested in it. 
and you keep investing in it on an idea you have that you want something to happen in a certain way for you whatever that is let's say you got you've been dating somebody and you're very invested in this relationship and you're hoping that this person is going to marry you so you have a heavy investment in it and then at, i know six months a year two years three years go by and you're proposing to the person and the person says no you know i don't want to marry you and then boom most of us crash emotionally really crash hard because you're so invested into the results you want the results to go your way and you're not free and so you crash you go into depression you become alcoholic you want to kill yourself you think life is over you become very sour very bitter so freedom has it's a, a a topic that has got a wide range of different um aspects of itself and to everybody as i mentioned it means different but what to me ultimately what i came to was inner freedom am i free from my mind from my emotions and from my body am i free from it Any questions, Ms. Hilda? No, I don't have any questions. Thank you. It was very good. You're welcome. Anybody, anyone has any comments, questions? Do you like discussing this? I'm here. Don't be shy. Yeah, freedom is all to follow your heart, listening to your inner calling and responding to it, being able to respond. A lot of people don't know that. We don't teach it to our children. It's not in our education about our inner calling, following our hearts. So a lot of us end up living a miserable life or living according to what daddy or mommy wanted us to be. And we go through years and years before we come to this understanding. And consequently, we have a lot of resentments. We're angry, we're upset. We're angry with life. We are angry with ourselves. That why we didn't follow our heart and I had to be a yes 
yes boy or yes girl and saying yes to my dad and just being afraid or wanting to get his approval and not really doing what I love to do or you know these days things are changing a lot for younger generation but we understand we know what I'm talking about younger generation seems like they're understanding following the heart they understand spirituality and incorporate spirituality a lot more into their lives they have their own challenges but a lot of this stuff they already they starting to figure out they have their own way of confusion and uh challenges that they have but certain things that maybe it took me 30 years to understand they already know it or they get to it very quickly When I sat in front of Master Punjaji and finally encountered this giant, this Buddha, this beautiful man, my Sat Guru, my teacher. And in just the first few days, I realized that this man has something that I want because he was very still. He was silent, you know, they, they didn't have a busy mind. You can tell when people have a busy mind. And he was very present here, really here. Of course, when I met him, he had already been enlightened for 50 years. When I met him, he was 80, 80 years old. He came to enlightenment, I think, in his early 30s, 31, 32, or whatever. And uh, so he had already been settled into this space of the self for 50 years. But it was very clear to, to me as a boy and spiritually very immature, when I encountered him, I, you know, I, maybe I thought I knew, but I didn't know anything. I was ignorant. So I come across this man and it's like, Phew. it kind of felt like you're sitting at the foothills of Himalaya. You're sitting here and you look like, and Mount Everest is in front of you. You're sitting in front of Mount Everest. You have seen these huge statues of Buddha. I don't know where they're in Burma or they're in Bhutan or Thailand or in India, they have these huge statues of Shiva and you're just sitting in front of it in meditation. And it's huge, it's a giant. And that's how it was sitting in front of this man being at his presence. And uh, the clarity, the space that would open up. And it was very clear to me, even at that stage of knowing very little, that this, this man is free. He has come to something very valuable. This man does not answer to anybody. He is the boss. No one can scare him or question him. He can question everybody, but no one can question him. He was, that's the feeling I got from him.
like he's free. He freed himself. And I wanted that. So I decided that I'm just gonna go on this quest till I get to, to this wisdom, this intelligence. So I spent the rest of my life in search of freedom. Because everything else, it wasn't that. I thought it would be, but it wasn't. Everything else comes with an attachment. It comes with fear, worry, anxiety, fear of death, fear of getting old, fear of getting sick, fear of losing. You lose your beauty, you lose your arm, you lose your partner, you lose your assets, everything. What's gonna happen to me? What's gonna happen to the world? Blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on and on. It's like a never ending list. So you cannot fulfill and satisfy that list in this, in this life. It's impossible. The most famous or uh, rich people or wealthy people are the most paranoid people on the planet. They're afraid. I lived in Los Angeles. I know Hollywood. I know the actors, the actresses. They're afraid of everything. They're always in fear. We see them on the stage that they're glorious and powerful, wonderful, beautiful. But in real life, they're afraid of everything. And to some certain point, they have the right to be because a lot of people want things from them. They're stalking them. They're following them everywhere. They're afraid maybe their kids get kidnapped. Maybe you find their home and you break into their home. Um, they really don't want to shake hands with people. They don't want to get close to people. They have to have bodyguards all the time. They have to leave and from the back door in hiding. And they're famous. They have a lot of money. They want it. But I don't want that life. I don't find it fun. But besides that, it's the inner freedom that they don't have. So how many actors, actresses, famous people, rock stars, singers, artists, we find out they committed suicide from depression. They didn't feel like they were good enough. They were loved enough. They didn't feel like they accomplished so it doesn't matter how much money you got or what you look like. You're just not free. So real freedom is different. It's the inner freedom. That's, that's where you come to the you enter into the kingdom of heaven by discovering inner freedom you have found a way to go beyond your wicked mind to go beyond this mind that takes you into all these peaks and valleys and hidden places of darkness takes you up and down constantly it's always playing games with you and it's one of the most 
powerful games it plays with you is it always tells you you're not good enough. You're not worthy enough. How many times you hear this in your own head? You want to do something, whatever it is. You want to start learning a language. You want to learn something, something on the internet. Ah, look at you. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're too old. That's the first thing you hear in your head. Maybe you hear it in the form of the voice of your dad or your or mom or sister. But you hear that. And you buy it. You buy it. And it drags you down. You crash. And it doesn't matter if you have a lot of money, it doesn't matter you're successful, it doesn't matter you look great, it doesn't matter you have an airplane, you have cars, boats, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what you have, you're not free. Because wherever you go, you have to carry your mind with you. That's one thing you cannot escape from. And it doesn't matter how much you decorate yourself on the outside. You look amazing. You look fantastic. Everybody's telling you how great you look, how wonderful you are. They're kissing your butt, whatever. They're throwing money at you or you're famous or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Wherever you go, you have to carry your mind with you. And if your mind is wicked, and you haven't mastered it, then you're a prisoner wherever you go. It's just like that. But the thing is, most of us been doing it all of our lives that it's become normal. You think, you don't even think about it, you don't question it, you don't think like it's something wrong. You go to the psychologist, psychiatrist, you take pills, you read books, we go to some workshops, we do some inner work, but it's not substantial. It's not complete. Because we don't get to the roots of it. It's half ass. Most of us, I know it because I work with people all the time, constantly. This is what I do. It's my profession now. I do it professionally. I get paid for it. It's very being straightforward. I get paid to work with people to help them free themselves. This is what I do. I do it every day. And I meet people from all walks of life, every kind, from young to older, from all sorts of people that super spiritual or people who are new to this. It's the same shit. Same shit. Always. Everybody's suffering from their mind. And the pseudo-spirituality, the new age, the new way of spirituality is completely ill-equipped to be able to help them. It cannot help them. It cannot um, <laughs> just, just one moment, excuse me. Uh, it's all right. I'll just continue. Yeah. It's the new, new way, new system of spirituality is exactly the opposite of what people need. Completely opposite. It's just like you have a wound and they put putting more salt on it or they put lemon. You squeeze some lemon on someone's wound. That's the new spirituality. 
No, it, it doesn't do anything for you. It just pushes you further away from where you want to get. Because I haven't found anybody in past all these years, not even one person. In all these years that I've been in this search of self-realization and been around all the gurus, and I went to some of really good ones, the big ones, they, they're not around anymore. I've been around a lot of spiritual people, a lot of seekers. I've been a seeker for a long time and I've been teaching for past 10, 11, 12 years. I have not found one single person who comes to self-realization from pseudo spirituality. Pseudo spirituality has not produced one enlightened person. Yet it's extremely popular because it sounds good. The idea that your co-creator partner with, with God and you have the ability to also create your reality because you're God and you can create your reality with your positive thinking, positive visualization by the power of your mind is just pure bullshit. It keeps you in a prison. It doesn't produce any enlightened people because you can't get enlightened by using your mind and empowering your mind by positive thinking, positive visualization. Oh, I'm manifesting a new car. I'm gonna manifest a new boyfriend. I'm gonna manifest a new girlfriend. I'm manifesting my reality. Manifesting your reality with your mind means you're activating your thoughts, you're thinking. You're thinking, thinking, thinking. You're constantly mind fucking. It's a system of mind fucking, activating your mind. And your mind is what tortures you. You're being tortured every day because of your mind, because your mind tells you you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not worthy enough. These are thoughts in your mind. Nobody comes and knocks on your door every day and gives you a certificate of ugliness. Oh, Zarathustra, you're really ugly. Zarathustra, you're so stupid. I'm the only one tell myself I'm stupid or I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough. No one else tells you that. So it means that it's a product of my mind and my imagination and my conditioning. Now, why would I want to make this mind stronger? By exercising it. I've already exercised it from age seven. I went to school all the way to the end of my college years. So it was like 12 and four, five, but 17, 18 years I've been exercising my mind and I, to, to, <laughs> I have to tell you something, honestly, I don't remember anything I studied. I don't remember anything I studied in, in elementary school. I don't remember anything I studied in high school. And I don't remember anything I studied in college. I cannot remember anything. Maybe I remember one sentence from a physics class. And I remembered the couple of art classes that I took because it was art. The rest, it's completely blank. I'm being honest. I'm publicly announcing it on internet to the world. I don't remember anything I studied, nothing. Yeah, I know how to read and how to write, 
and how to calculate. Of course, after 17 years, <laughs> you gotta be really a ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't be able to graduate from any of the levels if you don't learn that part. So that part I learned, but I can't remember anything else. And why should I remember any of it? What is it going to do for me anyway? What does it do? You memorize all these horseshit. Memorizing, 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 memorizing. Only memorizing to pass the test. And after that, like two days after, you can't even remember. But if you meet a cute boy or a guy or a girl that you like, you definitely remember them. And if you want to go out with them, you remember their name. And sometimes you remember them for, for a long time because you're interested. There's interest. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? So what does this mind exercises that they teaching us that you can manifest whatever you want by the power of mind, what does that do for you? You're teaching your, the master, your master, because the mind is a horrible the mind is a horrible master and a wonderful servant. If you learn how to go beyond the mind, I'm not talking about mind control because I don't want you to misunderstand. I don't teach mind control. I actually don't teach any kind of control. because there is no need to control anything. Everything is being controlled by that which created existence, the boss. We leave the creation to the creator, the one who has created this incredible phenomena some parts of it is beautiful, some part of it is screwed up. But some things, some intelligence created it. So we're going to leave life to that. Let that take care of its, its thing. So there is no need to try to control. That's another way of exercising your mind, trying to control. You learn to go beyond the mind. You find a system, you find a teacher, you find a teaching that is going to teach you to operate from no mind, means no thoughts. And you, which it's a migration from the head to the heart, learning to move from the head to the heart. It's a journey. And you operate from a state of a place that knows everything. They call it intuition or knowing. It's very different than knowledge. Knowledge and knowing are different. Knowing is something you already know. It's your direct experience or it's something without any kind of explanation, you already know it. Knowledge is borrowed information. Knowledge is stuff you read in a book, you are researching on internet, they teach you in school, but you haven't experienced it yourself. 
you don't know. You know? You, you don't know. It's not something you directly experience. It's information you're accepting as real. But you haven't discovered it on your own yet. So, what we do here in this system of teachings is to unconditioned the hypnosis that we put under because they, we have been hypnotized. And in this system of getting hypnotized, and, it, and I'm not referring to who or what, I'm talking to existence, we are hypnotized to operate from the mind that we always have to use our mind constantly and we have to know everything. And we're also haunted by this wicked mind, which is an expert in beating you up. Let's say, for example, you go to a dinner party tonight. You go to a nice party. You have a couple glasses of wine. You have some food. You have some chocolate. And the next day, you're not feeling 100%. You don't feel very good. Or you worry that, oh, I got exposed. I met some people in this party. What about the pandemic? Am I going to get COVID-19? Now, the next day, that night when you went to the party, you had a great time. But the next day you start beating yourself up. How many times have you done that? You went to an ice cream shop, you had some ice cream. Now the next day you're beating yourself up. You, you like to smoke cigarettes, you go, you have, you're out to dinner or whatever, you have a glass of wine, then you have a cigarette or two, and the next day you're beating yourself up. How many times you've done that? When are you gonna get tired of this game? Because we're constantly doing it. Constantly we do something in a moment, it feels great. And then later we're regretting and beating ourselves up for doing it. And where this beating happens, it's all in your mind. It's all your mind telling you, you should have not done this. You should have not done that. Well, you're so stupid. When are you going to learn? You never learn. Isn't that what your mind do to you? Or takes you to the past and telling you, okay, you could have done this differently. You could, you could have accomplished more. You didn't accomplish enough and blame you, or you're going to project into the future. And projecting into the future, which it doesn't exist because there is no such a thing as future, by the way, it's just a non existing, it's a nice fantasy. It's a fairy tale. It's a story they, they read to kids at night called Future. Okay? The story called Future, it's a fairy tale. It just doesn't exist. I'm sorry. Sorry to burst your bubble, but there is not, not, nothing such a thing as Future. It's just non existing. It's like Santa Claus. Santa Claus is a fantasy, but it doesn't exist. At least none that I know of anybody have seen it. It's like Mickey Mouse, Disneyland. Disneyland is a fantasy world. It's a non-existing world. It is in the fantasy of human beings. It looks great, but it doesn't exist. So what you do is you take your past experience and you project it in, in future. 
So you take your fears and you're projecting them into the future. When you're worried of something to happen, you're afraid of something that may happen in the future, means you are bringing your past and projecting it in a future time that you think it's, it may happen. But in reality, now, this moment is the only thing exists. There's nothing outside of now. It's always now. So why should I go spend my money and put a lot of time and energy, study all these different schools of thoughts of empowering me to create things with my mind, to manifest things for my future, which in fact is going to make my mind stronger and my mind is going to come and beat me up. Why would I do such a stupid thing? I'm trying to get rid of my mind. Why would I make it stronger? Do you understand my point? Yeah. That's why pseudo spirituality, this new wave of spiritual teachings does not produce any, any enlightened being, does not produce any free beings. No one gets free from it. And I know tons of tons of people been doing the same thing from this course to the next course to the next course and they're miserable they're just miserable always suffering always mind fucking always they're working on another oh i'm going to i'm going to be working on my inner child Okay, how long have you been working on your inner child? Oh, you know, past five years. I mean, when is this inner child going to heal? Well, I'm working on my wounds with my dad. I'm working on my childhood wounds with my mom. I mean, I mean, I know professional spiritual seekers have been doing it for 30 years. And they're still working on their wounds. Come on, if after 30 years you, you have not healed it, maybe you should think about you're, you're using the wrong method. Maybe there's another way of healing it because by in 30 years, you haven't got to any results. Isn't, isn't that logical to just think logically that, hey, Hello, wait a minute, maybe the method and the path I'm going the wrong, not I can't heal the wound, maybe it's not the wound, maybe my method of healing is the wrong method of healing. Not the wound is not getting healed. I mean, come on, after 30 years or even 10 years of not getting any results, and you're still going through same emotional reactions all the time, wouldn't you think it's logical to pause for one moment and kind of examine your method rather than jumping from one teacher to another teacher and another teacher? Because none of them are giving you results. So you don't want to stay with them. You're not getting results, so you're moving to different methods. You're not free, of course, thanks to Hilde, to bring up this topic, freedom, what is real freedom? What is freedom? 
you're not free until you are able to go beyond the mind into the silence. You come to this place that is quiet. And being quiet has become your way of being. I'm not saying that you don't speak. You do speak, of course. But you speak from silence because you have discovered the inner silence. You have discovered stillness <clears throat> inside yourself. And now, no matter where you go in the world, you are applying, that's going with you wherever you go because peace, inner peace, is going with you wherever you go. It has nothing to do with peace in the world. You want real peace? You want to come to real happiness? You really want to be happy? And I'm not talking about superficial happiness. I'm not talking about, oh, I'm so happy and so great. Because I run into people, they tell me, oh, Zaratustra, I'm so happy. Oh, I, I, I'm a new person. I'm really happy until their boyfriend flirts with another girl. Then all hell will break loose. Oh, what happened to your happiness? I thought you were really happy. That's not happiness. No. Real happiness is, it's steady. It's an inner happiness, inner peace. And don't mistake this level of happiness and inner peace. It's a steady state. You're steadily feel this inner joy. You constantly always feel connected with God, with your inner being, with the self. And you always, when you're quiet and you're not talking, you're just going meditation, you feel these bubbles of bliss coming. Like when we were sitting together earlier today for half an hour, we all went into this blissful place. We all went into this place of pure divine, pure divinity. Because it was inner, inner quiet, inner peace we came to. That is real happiness. And yes, you can be realized and become enlightened. But that doesn't mean you don't get angry. You don't get frustrated. You don't get sad. Enlightenment doesn't mean you have become as Superman in your emotions. Now you're not experiencing emotions anymore. That, that's not enlightenment. We're not talking about the system of learning how to numb ourselves. We already tried that with drugs, alcohol, sex. I can numb myself so I don't feel. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Your nervous system can get affected. Like my nervous system is affected by all these construction happening in this town. And when I was in Los Angeles, you hear the sirens because LA loves sirens, you know, helicopters over your head flying around police sirens, fire truck sirens, constantly, here is construction. Yeah, your nervous system gets affected. 
But that has nothing to do with being awakened, being enlightened. Or if somebody jumps at you and barks at you and starts yelling at you that you're an asshole or you're, you're an idiot or something, of course you are affected by it. If you get into an argument with your partner or your dad, your mom, your kids, you get affected, you know? You're in this heated argument, maybe for an hour or two you're shaking. That has nothing to do with being awakened, with enlightenment. That's your nervous system getting affected. That doesn't mean you're not awake. Any questions? Anybody? No. Anybody's here for the first time? Do we have a first timer? No? Yes? No? You can either write to me on the chat box or you can unmute yourself and talk to me or ask me your question or share with me what you feel like sharing. Don't, don't be shy. How's it going, Candace? It's going very well, and I just would like to say that um, the life training program gave me the freedom of all of those things that you listed. Yeah, so I'm very grateful and appreciative. Uh, you're welcome. I had a great time with you. It was a wonderful three months, four months that we were working together. I loved it. <laughs> I did too. Huh? I did too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the feeling is mutual. And I have to say, I'm so proud of you and I'm really happy to see this glow on your face and see how happy you are and, and of your accomplishment. You, you did so well. Thank you. It yeah. was just awesome. Yeah, you, you, you nailed it. You got it. I have to say, you <laughs> you got it. So yeah, yeah. so it's just life changing, really. Yeah, life changing all the time. It's always gonna go from one thing to another. So, and you just watch it. <laughs> You stay, you stay detached and you watch it. And it does its dance. Right now we're having this dance. I mean, imagine if you were in Europe and it's 1938 and you're living in Poland or you're in Germany or you're in France or you're, you're in Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia, it was that what it was before. And, uh, and all of a sudden the Nazi party is taken over and war is there. And you know, pretty much all over Europe, you have war. That was a weird time. It was dark. It was a very, very weird and dark time in human history. So, and now we have this, thing going on. And this too will pass. You just watch it. You stay in this place. 
you remain the observer and not getting involved with the story. The story dances, you know, this is a dance, the Leela, the Leela of existence. Shiva, Shiva is dancing. And Mara, Mara is the, when Buddha got enlightened and he was sitting under the Bodhi tree and he was very still. At the very end, before it becomes enlightened, Mara comes and it comes in a form of all these beautiful naked women. Five beautiful naked women, they appear in front of Buddha. And they're, you know, they're dancing, they're just giving him, want to give him grapes, they want to give him a glass of wine, they want to pull him in. And the Buddha remains really still. He's just like not buying into it. And these five beautiful naked women represented the five senses. There is a there is a movie was made in I think 1996. It's called The Little Buddha. I really recommend it that you watch it. It is a Hollywood movie, okay? I understand that. But don't worry about the Hollywood part of it. There's a part that it, it's a uh, blonde seven, eight-year-old American boy that is, there are these uh, Buddhist, uh, really high Buddhist priest that one of them is in America and he finds, they're looking for the reincarnation of the Buddha, for example, or the next Dalai Lama. That's the theme of the movie. So this high uh, Buddhist priest. He's looking for the next incarnation of the Buddha. And he finds this American boy, blonde, blonde boy, very American with baseball hat. But the Hollywood had to create something that Americans can relate to it. And then they find the, the soul of the Buddha came back in the, in the body of three boys, one American and two, one from Nepal and one from India. So instead of being in one body, it was in three different bodies. But there's a part of it in this movie is there's a narrative that Someone is telling a story. It's a storytelling. And the story is about how Buddha got enlightened. Now, this is the part I love. So be with me and pay attention to this part. The scene goes into the Buddha. He is sitting under the Bodhi tree. You know, and, you know, he's in complete, you know, he's in complete meditation. He's very still really still, is just sitting there and is just looking. And he's been there for days, but he's just very focused and still. So what happens at first, there's a, and this is all symbolics, okay, which is a very, very uh, exact to the time we're going through. So I highly recommend you watch this movie, Little Buddha. And I think it was made in mid nineties. So the first thing happens is that there's a huge um, tidal waves, waves, huge are coming. Like the ocean rose to maybe 40 meter and it's coming towards the Buddha and Buddha is sitting and the water is coming to crash 
on Buddha and the, the water is going to just destroy everything. And the Buddha is not moving. He doesn't get up and go. He just stays, you know, it's like this. And the ocean comes, the wave, the huge tsunami, it's a tsunami comes and the wave starts crashing on Buddha, but he doesn't move. And as it's crashing, the wave starts to disappear. So it doesn't touch the Buddha, but the Buddha remains still. He's not reacting. And then that goes away. Then an army of 10,000 soldiers come and they're in front of the Buddha. They're, let's say like 30 meters away. And the commander, they're all these like archers. So the commander calls and calls the archers to pull their, to shoot the Buddha. So, and then they're putting fire on top of the bows. So 10,000 soldiers, they pull their bow, arrow bow, and they shoot. They shoot all these arrows coming to Buddha. And the Buddha doesn't move. He is not going to hide. He just stays in his meditation. And all the arrows come. And as they get close to Buddha, the arrows turn into roses, to flowers. And they all fall at his feet. Yeah, you're with me? Then the next thing is comes Mara. Mara comes as these five beautiful, naked, gorgeous women dancing in front of the Buddha and they're trying to lure him in. Come and sleep with me, come and eat me, lick me, da da da, da. let me be with you. And the Buddha doesn't react, he stays into his meditation. It's really fascinating because the tsunami is like what is going on right now. The tsunami is happening in the world, the pandemic. What is happening in the world is like the tsunami happening. So if you are in your meditation, and your attention is in the self. Your attention is on the I am. You're in the presence. What can the pandemic do to you? What kind of power the pandemic or any terrorist activity or any army can do to the state of the I am. When you are in your original state of the being, what could anything do to you? Examine it for yourself. Don't believe what I'm telling you. I encourage you to examine it for yourself as I've examined it for myself. My teacher suggested for me to examine this for myself. So I did. Your state, your true being, your presence of the I am when you're in your apartment right now, wherever you are, and you're in this place, nothing in the universe can touch you because you are in the truth of the self. You are one with the very fundamental being of existence. Everything else comes from that.
So you are who you're looking for. What you're looking for all of your life is within yourself, here and now. Our sister Candace, in the life training program that we did, she got it. She recognized that. Now she's looking at life changing. Everything's going to come and go in, in the presence of the observer. When you're the observer, you are the observer of life. You are the observer of your body. You are the observer of your mind and your emotions. So you're in this place. What could anything that changes do to that which is always present? Because the only thing in the, in the universe that is real is that which doesn't change. So if you recognize that which doesn't change inside yourself, which is I am, which is the observer, which is the witness, then you have found stillness and everything else comes and goes and has no power. But if you believe what comes and goes is real, then you're in deep shit. You're in trouble. If you believe what comes and goes is real, you're in deep trouble. You have to find that which is always still. And you can't find it if you exercise your mind. Because your mind is always coming and going. You have to go beyond the mind into silence and into stillness that place which there is no thoughts then you are free and this is what we do this is what we teach here we're not teaching mental exercises we're teaching silence Opposite of what most of the world is teaching right now. And that's the way to the fifth dimensional consciousness. The 5D consciousness and awareness is pure stillness. There's no movement. It's the consciousness of the oneness. It's not involved with the world. It's watching the world. Anytime you get involved with the world, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Remain the observer of the world. You be in the world, but don't be of the world. You are in the world, of course. You have to pay your rent. You have a heater, you have a car, you have a motorcycle, you have to eat, you have to buy food, you have to make money. You're in the world, but you don't have to be of the world. If you become of the world, then you suffer. If you remain detached and just be an observer of the world, then you will never suffer. Nothing touches you. You become free. Okay? It's nice to see you all. <laughs> 
Sorry for the noise. I apologize on, on behalf of the, the town of Tulum. <laughs> Pretty soon, inshallah, God willing, I move into my house and I'm going to create my studio so I can broadcast and hopefully it will be quiet. So, And yeah, I, I'm still planning on uh, offering a free retreat. Uh, I, I'm planning to do everything we were going to do as soon as I'm settled in a place and I can broadcast and I have the freedom of broadcasting. So we're going to have that. Yes, I do want to put a retreat here in Tulum. Uh, it's going to be an ex exclusive retreat. Um, I don't know how many people I can take, but I'll let you know, but I do want to create a unified field, a field of being able to take you to all the power places here. And that's where we create a system to do the transmission. So, so using the power of the land incorporating with the inner power of the self and creating the field that can transmit to create the shift in us. In addition for that, uh, besides of broadcasting every Wednesday, I also offer a, uh, a program, it's called Life Training Program. It's a one-on-one -on -one training program, which is tailor-made to your needs. So I work with you once a week for one and a half hour for 12 weeks. It would take about three to four months. And I take you step-by-step -step through this very uh, particular system of helping you to become free. A uh, number of my people here, they've been, they've done it or they're doing it. And so far it's been very successful. So if you're interested in getting more information about the life training program with me, uh, feel free and send me an email. Uh, my email is info at zaratustra.tv. And then we, I will set up a, an appointment and we'll have a consultation. It's a free consultation. We talk about how long it takes, what, what is it you need to do, what, is your, what you can be expecting and how much it costs. So feel free to contact me. Um, this broadcast, hopefully if it comes out okay, it's funny because they stopped the construction right around the time we're finishing. So um, if it's not too noisy and Amir can edit it, then we're going to put it on YouTube, my YouTube channel and we'll send it out to you. Uh, also, I have my podcast and my Facebook channels and Instagram. It's all Zaratustra 5D the address for all of these channels, Zaratustra 5D. And my website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, I will continue broadcasting every Wednesday. Um, so we're going to meet next week. We shifted the time to 6 p.m. Uh, from 7 p.m. Um, I'm open to suggestions. If you think 6 p.m. doesn't work, we should go back to the old time. Feel free, send me an email. I'm open to hear about your opinion because this is for all of us and, uh, and I like to get your feedback. And if you have any suggestions, just connect with me. I appreciate it. Very good. Well, thank you for joining me and many blessings to all of you.
I look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste. Namaste.